The extraordinary life of Hetty Green, from wailing wealth to investment mastery. Ladies and gentlemen, gather round as we delve into the captivating journey of Hetty Green, a woman often dubbed the Witch of Wall Street. In a world where her financial prowess challenged societal norms, Hetty Green redefined what it meant for a woman to navigate the realm of business and investments. Join us as we unveil the remarkable story of how she became one of the wealthiest individuals in history. Number 1. A Wailing Dynasty and a Formative Childhood Henrietta Howland Robinson, later known as Hetty Green, was born in 1834 in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Her family, the Robinsons, were prominent Quakers who ruled over a booming whaling industry. New Bedford, a bustling hub of whaling activity, held the highest per capita income in North America during that era. With a lineage entrenched in maritime trade, Hetty's early exposure to her family's prosperous business laid the foundation for her future financial acumen. Number 2. A Unique Path to Financial Literacy While her peers played with dolls, Hetty found solace in poring over business documents. Her inquisitive nature led her to learn the nuances of commerce, reading her grandfather's financial reports, and understanding stock market trends. By age 10, she attended the Eliza Wing School in Sandwich, Massachusetts, where she deepened her financial education. During this period, Hetty's father, Edward Robinson, took over the family's whaling enterprise. Guided by her father's teachings, she not only managed the family books but actively engaged in trade, visiting warehouses and even reporting stock market news to her father. Number 3, Breaking Gender Norms and Embracing Austerity In a society where wealthy women were often confined to traditional roles, Hetty Green charted a unique course. She rejected societal expectations, disinterested in conforming to the conventions of her time. Eschewing materialism, she wore clothing until it was no longer serviceable, and disregarded daily grooming rituals. This behavior set her apart, frustrating her family members who hoped she would embrace her position as a wealthy heiress. Her preference for business matters over social engagements hinted at her true aspirations. Number 4, Independence in Love and Investments Pressured to marry, Hetty reluctantly moved to New York City, where she mingled with high society while showing little interest in finding a spouse. Her true passions lay in discussing stock market movements and Wall Street dynamics. Although her family anticipated a suitable match, Hetty returned to New Bedford without a fiancé but with a shrewd investment in bonds. Contrary to the misconception that she was uninterested in men, her interests lay primarily in financial conversations. Number 5, Financial Brilliance Shines Through Upon her return to New Bedford, Hetty Green's calculated investment decisions bore fruit. She proved her astuteness by investing $1,000 in high-quality bonds, a move that earned her father's approval. As the whaling industry declined due to the rise of petroleum, Hetty's father left the business and moved to New York. Her resolve and financial insights were vindicated as she navigated her family's fortunes through shifting economic landscapes. Number 6, A Relentless Pursuit of Financial Mastery Despite her family's pressure, Hetty remained resolute in her pursuit of financial independence. She spent the following six years balancing her time between New Bedford and New York, supporting her father's new business ventures while continuously refining her investment skills. Undeterred by societal expectations or threats of disinheritance, Hetty persisted in carving her own path in the male-dominated world of finance. Number 7, The Legacy of a Trailblazer Hetty Green's legacy as an investment trailblazer remains an inspiration to this day. Her unparalleled ability to navigate complex financial landscapes and her defiance of gender norms make her an enduring symbol of female empowerment. Beyond her wealth, Hetty Green leaves us with a lesson in the importance of carving one's own path, pursuing passions, and challenging conventions. Number 8, 
A Marriage of Millionaires. During her time in New York, Hetty Green crossed paths with Edward Henry Green, a self-made millionaire from Vermont. Edward, at the age of 44, had amassed his fortune as a partner at Russell and Company through commercial dealings with the Far East. Her father, recognizing the decline of his health and Hetty's ability to manage the family wealth, encouraged the marriage. However, Edward Robinson set a condition that Hetty would not inherit the wealth outright. Once the necessary documents were signed, the wedding date was set. Number 9, Inheritances and Legal Battles. In May 1865, Hetty Robinson and Edward Green announced their engagement. Tragically, shortly thereafter, both Edward Robinson and Aunt Sylvia passed away. Hetty became the principal heir of both estates, but the majority of these inheritances were tied up in trusts, yielding only interest income. Her father's estate, valued at $6 million, had $5 million locked in trusts, and Aunt Sylvia's estate was divided between charitable organizations and another trust that granted Hetty interest but not principal access. Number 10, Challenging Legal Battles. Hetty's discontent with the wills left by her father and aunt fueled her desire for greater control over her inherited wealth. Frustrated by the limited access to the principal, she contested Aunt Sylvia's will, ultimately leading to a legal battle. Though her efforts were partially successful, Hetty's inheritance remained primarily in trusts, solidifying her reputation as a shrewd and determined financial player. Number 11, Life in London. After their marriage on July 11, 1867, Hetty and Edward Green relocated to London. Exhausted by legal battles and wary of potential complications from the contested will, they sought solace in England. In London, they welcomed two children, Edward Howland Robinson Green, known as Ned, born in 1868, and Harriet Sylvia and Howland Green, named Sylvia, born in 1871. Number 12, Investment Philosophy. Hetty Green's investment philosophy was grounded in the principles of buying low and selling high. She shared, I buy when things are low and nobody wants them. I keep them until they go up and people are crazy to get them. Her investment strategy mirrored her father's, investing the interest from her trust fund in high-yield civil war bonds. Her meticulous approach yielded impressive returns, with her earnings reaching $1.25 million in the first year she spent in England. Number 13, Profiting from Greenbacks. Hetty held a significant number of union-issued greenback notes during the Civil War. Their value surged when Congress passed a law in 1875, backing them with gold. Demonstrating her methodical approach, Hetty thoroughly researched her investments, seeking information before committing her resources. Number 14, Managing Losses and Marital Strife. Hetty's financial expertise was not immune to personal challenges. She faced financial turmoil within her own family, as her husband, Edward Green, incurred significant debt. While she covered his losses, the strain on their marriage remained palpable, and she never forgave him for his financial missteps. Number 15, Thoughtful Deliberation. Hetty's reputation extended beyond Wall Street, earning her the titles of Queen of Wall Street, and later the Witch of Wall Street. She advised contemplating every business decision overnight before finalizing it. She believed in women's financial autonomy, emphasizing that every young woman should be equipped with financial knowledge regardless of their wealth. Number 16, Triumph During Financial Crises. Hetty's financial acumen was put to the test during the 1907 financial panic, a period marked by economic recession and bank failures. Hetty's wisdom as an investor shone through as she navigated the crisis, leveraging her accumulated knowledge to emerge unscathed. Number 17, Anticipating and Profiting from Financial Crises. 
In contrast to many of her Wall Street contemporaries, Hetty Green had an uncanny ability to foresee financial crises and strategically stockpile cash in the years leading up to them. Ahead of the 1907 collapse, Green predicted the looming disaster and prepared to capitalize on it. She once said, I saw this situation developing three years ago, and have records to show that I predicted it. I said that the rich were nearing the edge and that a panic was inevitable. In the years prior to 1907, Green accumulated a substantial amount of cash, which she lent out during the financial turmoil, reaping substantial profits. Number 18, A Savior in Times of Crisis During the height of the 1907 financial crisis, J.P. Morgan orchestrated a critical meeting of bankers and investors to devise solutions. Hetty Green was the lone woman present at this pivotal event. As New York City sought funds to stay afloat amidst the crisis, the Witch of Wall Street extended a $1.1 million check, receiving short-term bonds as payment. Number 19, Unconventional Methods and Determination Hetty's success in business rested on her diverse investments in real estate, mining, railroads, and mortgage loans. She was meticulous, unrelenting in her pursuit of debt repayment, and known to travel hundreds of miles alone to collect even the smallest debts. Operating during an era when women seldom ventured far from home without male companionship, Hetty's dedication to her work set her apart. Number 20, Embracing Moderate and Long-Term Gains In contrast to her eccentricities, Hetty Green was a fundamentally prudent investor. She understood that steady, long-term gains were superior to high-risk, high-return ventures. Her preference for sustainable, moderate returns, often around 6% annually, differentiated her from the more volatile investors of her time. Number 21, Frugality Amidst the Gilded Age Hetty's legendary frugality during the extravagant Gilded Age earned her the reputation of being the world's greatest miser. Yet, her thriftiness was an integral aspect of her investment strategy. Her reluctance to indulge in wasteful spending, while unconventional, contributed to her ability to invest with caution and restraint. Number 22, The Notorious Black Dress Hetty's signature black dress, worn for years on end, became iconic. While some saw her repeated attire as a sign of parsimony, it was actually an embodiment of her pragmatic mindset. She donned her dresses until they were nearly in tatters. Reports suggest that her maid only washed the hems and dirtiest portions, a testament to her resourcefulness. Number 23, A Lesson from Her Father Hetty's father, Edward Robinson, left an indelible mark on her financial practices. He famously smoked four-cent cigars and declined more expensive offerings, teaching her the value of moderation and the art of deriving satisfaction from simpler pleasures. This attitude of financial prudence was instilled in Hetty from a young age. Number 24, A Pioneer of Value Investing Hetty Green's approach to investment closely mirrored the concept of value investing, acquiring assets when they fell below their intrinsic value and selling when they exceeded it. Her strategy emphasized analyzing and calculating market value rather than relying on mathematical formulas. While Warren Buffett symbolizes contemporary value investing, it's argued that Hetty Green pioneered this approach. Number 25, Contentment in Frugality and Quaker Values Hetty Green took pride in her frugal lifestyle, an approach influenced by her Quaker upbringing. When asked about her short stay at a luxurious hotel, she explained, I am a Quaker, and try to live up to the principles of that faith. I dress plainly and live quietly. No other kind of life would please me. Her adherence to this lifestyle was pivotal for her investment strategy, allowing her to capitalize on assets during market panics while sustaining minimal personal expenses. Number 26, Forging Her Own Path Despite media criticism and occasional harsh treatment, 
Hetty Green's investment strategy diverged from the speculative practices of her Wall Street peers. She was quoted saying, it turns out that my life is written on Wall Street by people who, I suppose, don't care one iota about the real Hetty Green. I go my own way. I do not take on partners. I do not risk anyone else's fortune. Number 27, A Discreet Philanthropist. Despite her portrayal as miserly, Hetty Green's reputation included discreet acts of philanthropy. Her reputation as an effective nurse and her willingness to aid her neighbors during difficult times exemplified her compassion. Her poetic inclinations were in alignment with her frugal nature, as evidenced by her favorite poem, My Symphony by William Henry Channing, which begins, To live content with small means. While often accused of stinginess, she practiced charitable giving in her own private way, stating, I believe in discreet charity. Number 28, Astor Union. Her daughter Sylvia eventually married into the prominent Astor family, having turned down earlier suitors whom she suspected were interested solely in her wealth. Though Matthew Astor Wilkes, Sylvia's husband, hailed from one of the wealthiest families in the United States, he signed a prenuptial agreement relinquishing his right to inherit her fortune. Number 29, A Nomadic Lifestyle to Avoid Taxes. In order to sidestep property taxes, Hetty frequently moved to rented apartments, from Brooklyn to New Jersey. Even as one of the city's most significant lenders, she preferred cold meals of eggs, oatmeal, and onions to avoid driving up her fuel bill. During her later years, she lived with her son Edward Green and navigated her business dealings with utmost caution. Number 30, A Stoic End. Hetty Green's final years were marked by struggles with her health. She suffered a stroke believed to be brought on by a hernia. Despite the condition's severity, she refused surgery and opted instead to use a stick to alleviate pain and swelling. She relocated her office from the Chemical Bank to the National Park Bank due to concerns over potential poisoning. Hetty passed away on July 3, 1916, at the age of 81, likely due to a stroke. She had debated with her maid about the virtues of skim milk, a new product at the time. Number 31, Wealth at her passing. At the time of her death, Hetty Green, often referred to as the Witch of Wall Street, and the Queen of Finance, was believed to be the wealthiest woman in the United States. Her estimated net worth ranged from $100 to $200 million, equivalent to approximately $2.69 to $5.38 billion in 2023 currency. With these figures, Hetty likely held the distinction of being the world's richest woman upon her passing. We hope you found this video informative. If you have anything to add, please share your thoughts in the comments section. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share the link with your family and friends. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting, make sure to subscribe to our channel and give this video a like. We'll be back soon with more curiosities from history.